that's me just living my best life. Some of you may know me from my podcast, The Color of Influence, where I interview influential people of color, but I am also a mom to a beautiful baby girl named Kingsley and the partner to an amazing man named Jamel. I'm just a regular woman who enjoys traveling and spending time with her friends and navigating life. And then on January 20th, 2022, my entire life changed. On that date, I had my regular exam with my gynecologist. We talked about my fibroids. Um, She asked me if I had any concerns and I didn't. Um, Then she did my breast exam and she felt something that she thought was a cyst. Because it was moving, she wasn't really concerned. Um, And then she just kind of said that we would see what would happen when I did my regular annual mammogram. Then she pushed down and squeezed my nipple and fluid came out and she noticed that there was some blood in there. She asked me if that had happened to me before which it had and I told her you know I thought it had to do with uh, me not breastfeeding anymore and she definitely was concerned about that and told me that you know when you see blood coming out of your nipple that's never a good thing but let's not be concerned right now until we get our mammogram results and then we'll go from there. So this is the mammogram machine and it is not very comfortable at all. They smash your breasts no matter how big or small under these plates push down to get these images and I had to get a diagnostic mammogram so I had to take more images than you would normally have for a regular mammogram. And when the radiologist took a look at my images, she saw some areas of concern. And because there were areas of concern, she wanted me to come back and get a biopsy and an ultrasound on my right breast and in my lymph nodes. And so that's the next step. So I'm just leaving from getting a biopsy on my breast and my lymph node, one lymph node under my right arm. So as you can see, I am at the breast center. Um, The first time that I came to get my mammogram, um, I was very much so feeling defeated and very worried, very negative. And the week leading up to me coming here was no better. Um, I was very anxious, very scared, um, lots of negative thoughts. And I had a therapy session yesterday on purpose to help me to be a little bit more calm today. And, you know, her suggestions about staying positive and Saying positive affirmations to myself really did help today. Um, So lots of positive affirmations. Um, I was listening to some meditation music while I waited and just trying to stay more positive this time than the last time. Um, So it did help that um, The two women, well, the first woman that I saw was a black woman, and I think she could tell that I was nervous, so she definitely made sure that I was calm, Um, talked to me about all different kind of things to kind of put me at ease, and She definitely made sure that I was calm, um, talked to me and put me at ease, which was great. Um, And then I did my first biopsy and she let me know that she was going to be there the whole time. Um, The doctor walked me through everything, made sure that I knew exactly what was happening 
and um so i got two biopsies on my breast one on my right one on my left um there was some calcium deposits that they saw on my mammogram a couple of weeks ago and so um they wanted to biopsy to make sure that is nothing major so i got those done and then i went and got an ultrasound because there was something abnormal in my lymph node under my armpit and that was a excuse me that was a little bit harder um i guess she was touching um my muscle which they cannot um what do you call it numb they can't numb my muscle so it was painful and there was another black woman in there also which was nice so she was kind of like holding um wanted to be making sure i wasn't moving and when i felt that pinch like i grabbed her hand um and just held her hand and she's like do you feel that and i was like yeah and so the doctor's like i'm sorry we're almost done um and then she like did something else and i felt it again and the woman you know let me hold her hand and they were just so nice kelly and sandria um here at the memorial city breast center two black women wonderful um even my other um i don't know how to pronounce her name and i don't want to butcher it um she was middle eastern very helpful as well very calming my doctor very helpful and calming but there's nothing like having a black woman in the room with you when you are afraid um and so i was asking the doctor questions when we were finished that she kind of answered kind of didn't and the sandria uh, when she left actually gave me the answer and reassured me that um you know usually when it's something major and your lymph node is damaged it doesn't move and mine was moving which is why the doctor was having a hard time biopsying it and um hit my muscle and so she said that was a good sign and that even if it is something there from the biopsy results that it's not damaged um which is a good thing and she kind of left it at that she explained that your lymph nodes are your first line of defense so they can um, show signs of inflammation or um, abnormal they can look abnormal um, if you have something else going on in your body that they are trying to fight off and we have lymph nodes everywhere and that could be it and it could be something else so I'm staying positive um, focusing on the good side of this that you know it could be nothing and I will find out next week and yeah that's it so I get my results back from all of my scans and MRI and everything my biopsy and I get a call from one of my doctor's associates because she was on vacation when the results came in and the doctor calls me and tells me all these very technical terms tells me that I'm gonna be fine but was not a specific at all about anything and I'm the one who had to ask her do I have breast cancer and she's like oh yeah you have breast cancer but you're gonna be fine we caught it early it's treatable here's the name of the doctors that your doctor wanted you to call to set up appointments your breast doctor your oncologist and plastic surgeon so just call them set up appointments and then she also wants you to get uh, some other tests done in the meantime hangs up the phone I'm like devastated because the phone call had no care behind it, it was very nonchalant um, meanwhile, I'm in my bathroom, like breaking down crying because I cannot believe how I found out that I had breast cancer. And then maybe a couple hours later, um, I receive a voicemail from my doctor cause I did not answer the phone and she told me she was on vacation, but she wanted to be the one to give me the results so that she could talk to me about all of my next steps. 
So she's like, I'm going to call you back in 10 minutes. Um, hopefully you'll be able to answer because I'm on the Wi-Fi in the lobby of my hotel. She calls me back. She apologizes for the other doctor's lack of care in telling me about my diagnosis. And then she proceeds to tell me I have triple negative cancer. It seems to be grade two. Very difficult to treat with medication. Um, it's going to have to be treated either radiation and chemo or just chemo. Triple negative is more aggressive. Uh, it occurs in a lot of African American women. And the options would be a lumpectomy and a mastectomy. She goes on to tell me about her breast cancer journey that she had encountered a couple of months before I got my uh, breast cancer diagnosis. And so from there, um, she made me feel a lot better about everything. Uh, she, again, she apologized for the way that I found out. But um, yeah, guys, like that's how I found out that I had breast cancer. So the next step, I received a call from my breast cancer nurse. Um, she was extremely nice, very uh, um, understanding, obviously, of the situation. She told me that my HER2 results um, were positive, which means I have no triple negative cancer, but HER2 is also aggressive, but it can be treated with uh, medications or chemo. Um, so I'm going to do that before surgery, but I'll find everything out when I talk to my breast doctor. And she also decided to not decided, but she also was sending me resources for work and how to talk to my family and what to expect in my first doctor's appointment. So it is technically March 17th it's like one in the morning <clears throat> and sleep has not come very easy to me in the past couple of days just thinking about a lot um, and I've been taking naps throughout the day I think I'm just mentally exhausted maybe but my nurse called me and told me that I don't have triple negative cancer, breast cancer. Um, my HER2 came back positive. When I Googled it, HER2 is a protein, I guess that causes cancer, I don't know. I mean, I Googled it, but I wasn't. It didn't say it causes cancer, but it can be treated with medication. Um, so I don't know the technical name of what my cancer is right now. I'll find out on Tuesday. And she talked to me about some options. The uh, pretty much tell me everything Dr. Cole told me in advance. Um, I guess she would be like my support nurse where I can call her whenever I need to talk. Um, her name is went out of my head oh Erica Erica Scott Erica Nicole Scott is my nurse um, she talks to me about the fact that I may need to get chemo before any surgeries um, and that I will find out everything Tuesday. She'll be working with Dr. Lee. Um, and pretty much, I think that's it for today. Um, trying to vlog while I feel up to it as much as I can. Um, I've been okay like I'm not afraid of losing my hair I'm not afraid of losing weight and being sick um, my biggest concern like I said before is Kingsley um, you know I'm an adult 
Um, This is going to wear me down, I'm sure, in one way or another, whether it's dramatic or not. um, My body is about to go through some changes and I can handle it. But, you know, that's it's just me and her for the most part. Um, We're on spring break right now, so she's not going to the babysitter. Um, But... Yeah, like, we hang out together. I mean, even when Jamel's awake, um, she prefers to be in my space. And it's great at times, and then at times it's not. Um, You know, besides the heavy things that are on my mind, sometimes you just want space as a person. Um, So it is kind of hard to you know not have that um and get a break but i'm soaking it up right now because i don't know how much energy i will have i don't know how much i'll be able to do these things with her um so i'm just doing it now She's my biggest concern with this whole thing Um, because we are very interactive with each other. We're very physical hugs and picking her up a lot and, you know, just cuddling and playing and singing and dancing. So I would hate for that to not continue in some way, shape, or form. The other thing is I, um, what was I about to say? Um, I can't even remember. I really can't. Um. Uh, totally left my brain but um, I don't know what I was about to say but outside of that um, I have not been working out I know last week I did a lot of meditating a lot of qigong a lot of meditating because I just wanted to be in a good headspace to get those results um, in case it was not in my favor. And then when I got my results, I couldn't sleep. So I went to sleep late, like now, and didn't wake up on time um, the following day. And then it is now technically Thursday. And I still have not been sleeping um, and have been napping in the middle of the day. Um, So I need to work out. Uh, I really do. Some way, shape, or form. Um, It's having a negative impact on me physically, mentally, emotionally. I just am a lot more tired uh, because I'm not doing anything. So whether it be first thing in the morning or not, um, I got to do something. Ride my bike, walk around the neighborhood, something to, you know, some kind of physical activity, um, if not an actual workout. I'm not going to lie. I don't want to work out because I've already been struggling with getting like, not that I've been struggling. I'm finally at a place where I'm accepting my pre baby no, post baby body. And I'm finally at a place where I'm comfortable starting over with my fitness 
um, realizing that after Kingsley, my body is different. So now I have to work on composing it back to some kind of something. And so to work out, work out like I normally was for the past couple of months, um, I know that once this starts, I can't do that. I can't do that much working out. Like I can walk probably, I don't know. My guess is that I can walk and do simple things. Um, But lifting how I have been lifting with my deadlifts and my squats and my good mornings and my power cleans and my hang cleans and my whatever else is I don't think I'm going to be able to do that so I kind of don't want to do it um I mean I don't really know how to explain it I don't want to say I feel like it's a waste of my time to do it knowing that I'm going to have to start back over. But in a sense, like, I feel like it's a waste of time to do it. Mm, Maybe I I don't know. Like, the hardest part is that I don't know if I should be exerting myself right now. Um, I don't know. Like... I don't know what I should be doing. I really don't. Like, I I have my period coming up, so I'm going to juice this week, following week, um, after spring break. So it's like, is that okay that I juice? Like, this is insane. It's crazy. Like, I don't even know what I'm supposed to be doing no one's saying like here's how you prep for your life with cancer um you just say you're gonna see the doctor make all these appointments and yeah but there is no like live your life like normal for the next week I guess that's what I'm supposed to do not gonna lie like I know that I have to change my eating habits so this week I purposely had a piece of cake it was disgusting had a piece of chicken it was disgusting um what else did I eat had some popcorn Mm, it was lackluster these are things that I normally would not eat um just because I'm like let me just eat it. Like, I know after this, I'm not going to be able to eat it. I have to be way strict because I know certain things cause things to go haywire in my body and I can't do it um, continuously. So I have to follow my Dr. Savy diet again um, strict and be strict with it. So I know this. So I thought, oh, let me just kind of eat what I want this week. I was this close last week to getting pizza. Um, Again, I know I'm not supposed to be eating pizza, dairy, but I probably, if I had to really think about it, I probably had pizza maybe a couple times a month um, here and there. It's weird because like right around my period I get these weird cravings and I don't know what's in cheese but I just always want like a cheese pizza so I go to Whole Foods because I feel like it's a little bit healthier although the past two times I went it was so greasy that it was just like bleh. um so I don't know like honestly I don't know what to do right now I'm in that holding pattern having to wait for this doctor's appointment and yeah like I don't know 
I'm okay in general. I have my moments where I just cry because I'm sad and like I'm walking around with cancer in my body. Can't do anything about it. I don't really know a lot about what is going on. Um, so it's hard. The more I talk about it, the better, I don't even know if you can say better I feel, the more comfortable I feel with the information. Um, not that I don't still like get overwhelmed. I think the hardest part is wanting to rely on Jamel. And honestly, I don't think that he emotionally is very good at dealing with these things. Um, I find myself checking on him, but not really having it reciprocated, you know, um, where I'm saying to him, like, hey, are you okay with everything? Like, no lot's going on. Are you good? I don't get that. And it's hard. Um, that's hard. Because I want to talk to him about stuff, but to have someone not respond when you open up about things it's hard to have conversations with him and like he's my person I can't talk to him like I don't know what he's thinking you know very short answers when I bring stuff up so it's like is that how you feel or is that just what you want to express um get anything like he texted me one day and asked me if I was okay because I told him that I was just really scared um when I told him I was scared he was like oh really and that was it therapist told me that I really need to be more open with him and tell him what I need from him um, but I don't even know how to explain it like of course I want to sit and have conversations but when the people around me not good at communicating and expressing themselves I love my mom to death but outside of my initial telling her when I give her updates there is like an immediate change of subject after I tell her stuff These are two people that I really rely on and neither one of them are good at being empathetic, expressing emotion, letting themselves be emotional because they just have always felt like they had to be just so strong. And it's like have a vulnerable moment and be honest about how you feel like oh, it's so frustrating so frustrating my sister has been like the saving grace out of the three of them because she asked me how I'm doing 
but not like premature like not I don't want to say premature not like a forced thing it's like really you know how are you handling everything and I appreciate that so much because uh, I get tired of like sometimes I feel like people are over the top where they send me stuff all the time and they you know send me quotes and send me a bunch of stuff and it's like stop like I just found out you know and one of my friends gave me like a laundry list of stuff to do and um, I'm like this is very overwhelming um, like very overwhelming and she was like well I have to get it out like this is what I need to do so selfish that's all I keep thinking so selfish because I'm being open and telling you that I just found out that I have cancer and Instead of you hearing me say this is overwhelming by all this information you're sending me and you saying, let me know when you're ready to receive something else or if you have questions. She continued to send it. And I said, I'm not going to read it. And she continued to send it. Send different things. I just felt like that was selfish. Because she wasn't thinking about me. She was thinking about herself. And, um, you know, gave me the name of an herbalist. And, um, you know, tell me about some other things that I needed to be doing, in her opinion. You guys know I'm all about Dr. Sebi. Um. I have never shied away from the fact that I believe that his eating habits and the herbs that he recommends and all those things um, do make a difference in your life. Like, I do believe it. However, when I'm finding out a few days before telling you that I have cancer and you're like, you need to go to this herbalist, he's cured such and such amount of people that I know. Um, it's not covered by your insurance, but you know, it may be like $500, but you need to get it. Okay. Like, can I figure out what is wrong with me first? She knows I haven't had a doctor's appointment and called me today. This, the first conversation we had was either Saturday or Sunday. Um, no, Sunday or Monday. And she gave me the name of the herbalist. I never called. I never asked questions. She went there today, called me from there and said, do you want to speak to him for a couple of minutes? And I said, no, I'm not there yet. Like, I'm not one to like be there out in the bush. So I kind of feel like she should have known that if I was going to call this man that I would have called him by now if I was ready to call, so it's kind of frustrating um, because I haven't even had my first doctor's appointment post results. Um, And to me, that's kind of my focus is just this first consultation doctor's appointment. Um, So I can even know all the ins and outs because right now I just know paper results that's it biopsy results and paper you know what's on paper so yeah I mean hopefully nothing else comes up and I don't have to say anything until after Tuesday when I have my appointment so Yeah. Try to get some sleep at this point.
So today I met my breast doctor and she was amazing. Um, she made me feel so comfortable. She was very thoughtful. I was able to record it, but it was a very long video. So it took forever to upload. So I'm just going to tell y'all what it is that she told me. So as I already knew, my cancer is HER2 positive, but it's negative for all hormones. It is inside and outside my milk duct. And it's difficult for her to determine like what stage it is because they can't see my T level. So I'm going to have to get a mastectomy first to determine my stage and then I'll get chemo. Um, the cancer is covering a large area of my breast um, from the right breast only. So that's good. It's close to my nipple. So no matter what, I'm going to lose my nipple and my areola only on the right side um i'm going to get some blood work done to see if it's in my liver i'm also going to get a genetic test to determine if i have if i have the bronca 2 gene and then i'll also be getting a chest x-ray to see if it's in my lungs and then a contrast mri to help them see if there are any other issues happening on my left breast um i also did have to get um, my lymph node biopsied and so far that lymph node is clear. I just got my MRI and chest x-ray. First time getting an MRI and it was not easy. You have to sit in there and not move. I had to sit for about an hour and 45, I mean, about an hour to 45 minutes. Um, I think it was more like 45 minutes. But I'm done. I got a chest x-ray and now I'm finished. That is the last of my tests until I go to the oncologist this Thursday. And, um, and then I see the plastic surgeon next Thursday. So time to meet my oncologist. Um, Dr. Desai is my oncologist. So I met with her to talk about chemo. Um, but as I was heading there, she received my MRI results. And so her and Dr. Lee, who's my breast doctor, had a conversation before I got there. And they determined that the mass is located um, in the exact spot that they thought. And they were able to see it and determine that I have stage one invasal ductal carcinoma, HER2 positive. So now instead of having the mastectomy first, I'll be getting chemo first. And my first treatment will start in a couple of weeks. I will go every 21 days for six sessions. I will also have to get a port put in my chest for my treatment and then they gave me a list of all my medications that I'm going to have to take while I'm getting my chemo. They told me about this thing called a cold cap um, that would help keep my hair but my nurse told me that you know read, read the reviews and look up the videos um, so I'll be doing that. She also had me get the COVID vaccine. I got some blood work that I have to get. Um, and then I got my genetic test back, y'all. And thankfully, I am negative. Um, and funny thing is that Dr. Lee's office called me right after I left the oncologist's office to schedule for me to get my port put in the next day. Like, this stuff is happening super fast. Um, so yeah now i know i will be getting chemo first and then i will be getting a mastectomy i'll meet with my plastic surgeon at some point um but chemo is up next